too, I think this is a really good lesson for people that are in the Buddha Ryukai. Uh, kind of a, a little bit of a, this is more of an occult or esoteric type of a lesson, more of a hidden knowledge type of a lesson within something that we do. When you guys are studying Tomoryu, you guys know you have the Taijutsu Kimi Yagoki. Now the Taijutsu Kimi Yagoki is based off of the Jisen Gata. The Jisen Gata in its original form was the Tojutsu. I've said this in, for ever since the beginning, website, all the books. Uh, originally, the focus in the Tomoryu was a, was a Kodachi, it was a short sword school, right? And then they had Heiho and all this other stuff along with it. As the years go on, so you see the Koryu being um, something that kind of looked down upon, and then Gendai Budo, which became more modern in Japan at the time, so things like Karate Do, Aikido, Kendo, Judo, Yaido, the idea of Do became very popular, where the old schools, or Koryu, was kind of looked down upon. It's, you wasn't supposed to do that. It wasn't wasn't correct way of training anymore, right? Uh, that's kind of how a lot of it was looked. So what they did, and um, lots of different Ryuha did this, not just this particular school, but they started adding things, Taijutsu, things of that self-defense techniques, this sort of thing. Jujutsu, Taijutsu, whatever, whatever, they added these skills so then it appears one way, but they still wanted to be able to pass on the tradition, right? Now, everything I just said is in every Tomoda book, website, and you guys have heard that little spiel differently, but you've heard that information before. What I think is important out of that aspect is, though, when you look at the, the, first, the one thing that we teach underneath Black Belt in the Buddha Ryukai, as far as Tomoda is concerned, you guys get the Taijutsu Kimi Agoki and the Taijutsu um, Kimi Kamai. That's really it. It's very important that you guys know that that is the newest addition to the school. It was applied to the school in like the late 1890s, somewhere in there. The 17th Soke is the one that implemented this into the curriculum so that the tradition itself could survive in the present day. The Taijutsu Kimi Agoki that you guys do learn are based off of the Tojutsu, just without the sword. When you study the Tojutsu, you can clearly see that the Taijutsu Kimi Agoki was based off of that, right? And then you get the 20, obviously there's the 20 Kasuri Buki Gata, uh, Kakushi Buki Gata, and then Bojutsu Gata. So, but they're all based off of the same idea, the same philosophy, the same principles from the Tojutsu. As if you have these 20 ideas of methods of war, how does this work when you don't have a blade? How does this work when you have a stick? How does this work when you have a chained weapon, and how does this work when you have hidden weapons? So that's where you get what's called the Hyakugata, right? And there were 100 techniques, but they're all still based off of those original 20 Tojutsu techniques. When you look at the Taijutsu Kimi Yugoki, it's important to know that that name of it is much different than all the other subsections. So you have the Tojutsu Gata, right? So you have the blade techniques, Bojutsu Gata, stick techniques, Kasuri Buki Gata, or the chained weapon techniques. Kakushi Buki Gata, or the hidden weapon techniques. And then over here you have the Taijutsu Kimi Yagoki. And it's important to understand what that means, and why we have the Taijutsu Kimi Kamai, which is what we're talking about here. That's the point I want to get today. The Taijutsu obviously is empty, is body motion, body technique, right? That sort of thing, how you, the, the art of moving your body. But the Kimi Yugoki means a feeling form. But it's not a form like you could draw the form. It's a, it's a feeling of a formless form. I know that sounds weird, but that is, in its essence, that's what it is. You have to create the form based on the energy or the feeling that's in front of you. So the Taijutsu Kimi Yugoki, which is taught under Black Belt in the Buddha Ryukai, because once you hit Black Belt, that's when you really get into the Tomoru, the Ninjutsu, and the Bujutsu, and all that kind of, you catch what I'm saying? That's when you see that, you guys know that. But, m most people online don't know that, but I'm just throwing that out there because the camera's running. But, the, twi the Taijutsu Kimi Yagoki, that is the, the body techniques, and you're, those are based on an, a feeling, and you have to form to that particular energy. From there, you get the 20 techniques. Now, you know, 10 of those techniques is where you, again, lack of better word, camera going, you oppose the energy. That's not a good word to use, but camera running, I'm going to use a generic one, and then you have 10 techniques where you go with the energy. So that's where you get your 20. You have 10 where you, again, oppose or resist the energy, and you have 10 where you go with the energy. Then you get the 20. So you have, basically, it's 10 techniques, Amote and Ura, right? Okay, kind of like the hand. You have 
There's 10, it's like that, right? Okay. So, when you're learning the Taijutsu Kimi Agoki, you have to understand the Taijutsu Kimi Kamai. The esoteric or an occult way of looking at these particular Kamai, we're not going to go through how to do the Kamai. You guys already know how to do the Kamai. That's not the lesson. It's understanding what's, how it's written and what it means. So when you look over here, we have Chi no Kamai, Ten no Kamai, uh, Oni no Kamai, Kaze no Kamai, and Kage no Kamai. Chi no Kamai, right? So we're talking about a posture or earth, posture of earth. Now again, it's called Kimi Kamai. Taijutsu Kimi Kamai. So it's a feeling of. Earth is giving you a feeling of stability, right? But to connect to that energy, again, Kimi is, this Kimi, uh, this key is energy, right? Key. To connect to the energy, you have to not have barriers. A lot of times people ask me these questions, like I really want to learn Saki Jutsu, which you know that's part of our testing. We do that almost on all black belt tests, and that's not under some organizations only do it on fifth. We do it in class, and we do it on almost all of the black belt tests, not just a fifth, because I think it's a, 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 an essential skill within ninja too. But that's neither here nor there. To understand how to feel energy, you have to practice it. So when you look at Chino Kamai, and you look at Chino Kamai, and it's from the Taijutsu Kimi Kamai, it's feeling what is from Earth and its energy. People ask me all the time, well, how do you do that? Well, for one, most people walk around on a rubber floor, clothes with 50% polyester, surrounded by lights, Wi-Fi, and everything that disconnects you from natural energy. So the first thing to be good at connecting to energy, whether it's in any part of the Earth element, you have to disengage yourself from the man-made artificial energy. Again, electricity, um, Wi-Fi, clothing that would have something in there that would stop you from rubber-soled shoes on the Earth, that sort of thing. You're disconnecting yourself. The net, but it's not just that. You guys can strip down bone naked, jump out in the middle of the woods. But if you already have mental barriers, emotional barriers, and spiritual barriers up, it's going to be very hard to connect. So if you already made it up in your mind, this is hocus pocus, it ain't going to work. Well, then it's hocus pocus, it ain't going to work. There's just no other way around it because you can't connect to something you don't, you don't believe in. So when you look at the earth, chi no kamai, or the posture of earth, stability, it's the elements of the earth. So we talk about earth or water or fire or wind or wood or any of this kind of thing that would help you take energy, natural energy, and learn to connect to it. Do you catch what I'm saying? But to do that, you can't put up barriers. If you put up barriers like, you know those people that constantly have, like we call them fronts. I'm sure you've heard that before, right? They put up fronts. They make people, you have a false image, you drive a car that's too expensive for you, 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 you present yourself a certain way, you do all these things that aren't really true to the form. And again, the form, of, come on, it, 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 it's not true form, right? And by doing that, all these things, it's very hard to get a connection when what you're, you can't connect to something when they're not truly connecting to you, they're connecting with what it is you're putting out. Right? Like one thing, everyone, like, I say everyone, a lot of people on the internet, and I'm going to point to the camera here, a lot of people the camera, they'll say things like, oh, well, look at the way, you know, um, Anshu Krista Jacobson, or Soke Anshu, or whatever the word they choose to use to describe me, right? Look at the way she does this on Instagram, or she posts this on Twitter, or she posts this on Facebook, or she said that on, on YouTube. I'm not bound by the same social restraints as they are. That's the facts. When you look at most martial art teachers, all of them, they got the beard, they pretend to be a Buddhist, they all act the same way, they all talk the same way, this is the way a martial art teacher should be, and that is so wrong. Every individual has their own character and their own beauty. No two flowers are the same. You should let them blossom and be the person. But we live in a world where most martial art teachers would rather present themselves as this dogma of this is my image, this is who I am, I look like a Buddhist instructor and I'm doing this, and it could be any martial art, it doesn't matter if it's Japanese martial arts, Chinese martial arts, or whatever, they tend to put on an image that's not truly them. For me, I get away from that. So, Instagram, here's pictures of me and my kids and my family and driving my Mustang or whatever, and Twitter, and the, the, post the nude, nudes on Twitter or this, 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 or talking about esoteric and occult stuff. But until you get understand 
to drop the boundaries of just the earthly attachments. You can never move up the rest of those particular postures. So you have to let go of that. Because anybody who looks at my Instagram account, it's like, oh, she can't be a good teacher because they're the ones that have, they're, they're inside a box. Do you catch me? Mm -hmm. But once you get past earth feeling, now we're moving into Tendo Kamani. That's the heavens. So now you've got to let go of all that. And it doesn't matter what religion someone is or spiritual or whatever. There's the divine. So whatever religion you choose or spirituality you choose or whatever that is, something made something. At the end, people like to talk about, well, what's God? Most people understand that God is the creator. Whether that's energy or an individual or multiples or whatever they want to believe. But you still have to let go of things to submit yourself to whatever it is that you decide to follow in that realm. You have to let go to get to where you're going. You can't hold on because it's, it's safe. Then we move on. Now we have the next one. And over here we have Oni no Kamai. So Oni in Japanese means demons. We all have demons. Anyone who tells you that you can defeat your demons, they're lying. And they're selling you something. They probably wrote a book or they got some sort of little program they want you to do for six weeks kind of thing. Or go on some little trip where you're there for whatever, meditate underneath some, somewhere, right? You will never let go of your demons. You're born with them. It's like a shadow. That is going to take, that's going to go with you everywhere you go. The only time you don't have a shadow is when you're in darkness. And that's just because it's at home. You're never going to beat your, never going to beat your demons. You're going to learn to live with them. You're, you're going to learn to be better than them every single day. But those demons, regardless of where they are, what they are, you have to learn to overcome them. But you can't overcome the demon, Oni no Kamai, this, this position that you have, this, unless you admit to what they are. And again, let go of this attachment of whatever it is that's stopping you from being able to overcome those demons. Whether you're not good enough, smart enough, whatever you think is a negative. Most of it doesn't exist. It only exists in your mind. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not pretty enough. I don't have enough money. I'm not fast or quick. I don't have enough muscle. All that stupid shit that doesn't matter. None of that matters. None of that has a goddamn thing to do with anything. It just only matters in your mind. It doesn't matter in reality. The next one we see is Kaze no Kamai, or the wind. How many times have you guys had people tell you something you don't like? Or you heard something you don't like? Someone else's opinion. They're speaking. You have to learn to let go of that, the attachment. It is, I mean, as a transgendered woman who runs a school of combat, do you know how many small-minded, small men have an issue with me for running martial arts, a more successful business than they do? And they, are the, they present themselves again. They present themselves with this image like we talked about in Chi. They got the beard and the tattoos and they work security or the military or police. They carry a gun and alpha male. And they, you know, they got this image because everyone has that image. And they want to make sure that, and they're all they're pissed at me. Because a transgendered woman that does all this shit is ten times more successful. So what do they do? Well, they obviously don't run a more successful business than me. That's why they're pissed at me. Because the same people that trash me on the internet, they don't trash the people that have terrible businesses. They don't trash the people that are not successful and are doing nothing. They trash the people... <laughs> that decided to do their own thing and become very successful. Have you ever noticed that? Mm -hmm. The people that get hammered on the internet are people that decided to do their own thing and became very successful. For the most part. Sometimes they are telling the truth. Right? I'm not defending everybody, but let's be real here. My point is, is when have you guys ever seen me make a video or make a post hating on someone or going after someone? Never. One, it's just tacky as hell and it just you shouldn't do it. And if I'm not going to tell you guys not to do it, then I'm not going to do it because it sets a bad example as an instructor, looks bad on as, a, as the organization, and it looks bad down the line that my kids are going to see it. Then it looks bad for, like, bad for business is way on, down on the list. It's just bad. That tacky making fun of people on the Internet, it's so terrible. There is nothing anybody can type on the Internet that's going to change that. You either become successful or you don't become successful. Because if, if opinions mattered and people typing negative things on the internet truly meant you wouldn't be successful, then I wouldn't have, like, I studied martial arts all these years. Then I helped teach martial arts for years. 
In 2004, I started the Budarukai. I started my own organization almost 20 years ago. For almost 20 years, I've been teaching professionally ninjutsu on a worldwide scale. And if any of their opinions mattered, then I wouldn't be where I am. But you guys got to let it go. So many people let that shit go. Someone said me this, or a friend texted this, or someone posted this, or someone said this. And that's what that, that, that kaze no kamai, that wind, the position of wind. Wind will come and go. It's never going to stay in one spot. It's not stagnant. It's constantly moving. When someone states an opinion, you are specifically looking at something that happened in time. The people on the internet that, like, they talk the trash and they're, they're responsible for these forums, the positive thing, here's a positive, here's a fun little statistic that I've never said online, but it's going up now. They're probably responsible for 35% of book sales and videos. I get at least two or three times a week someone sending me an email saying, well, spot, I've been, you know, I used to talk all this trash because I believe so-and-so or I saw these videos, but then I started watching your YouTube page, started following you on Facebook. Well, these guys are just wrong. They're just haters. I want to apologize for the stuff that I said years ago on so-and-so's video. I get that every freaking week. So yes, we get the haters too, but we get that as well every single week. Kage no Kamai, the shadows. Well, it's where we're all going to, it's we started, that's where we're going to end. So that just keeps you understanding that life in this moment is the only thing that matters. Right? Because I'm going to bet most of you guys in here did not, was not responsible for your birth. Most of us were not responsible for our birth. Someone else was responsible for our birth. Right? Most of us in here are not going to be a coward and be responsible for our death. We're not going to take our own life. Something else is going to do it, whether it's, you know, some pandemic, cancer, you know, whatever, something. Old age, something is going to take our life, but we're not going to be the one that does it. So if you're not responsible for the start of your life, and you're not going to be the one that ends your life, the only thing you can do is be positive and successful in that those middle points, right? By doing that, you have to let go of all this stuff. Do you catch what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's the position or the kamai that you should take. So even though, yes, under black belt, they learn, you know, chi no kamai and ten no kamai and da-da-da, they're learning it as a stagnant position that they use to learn a kata. But every one of those kamai or postures or positions have a deeper esoteric meaning. And you take those esoteric or occult meanings and lessons and apply them to your life. So when you're dealing with natural energy, let go of all the horse shit. Connect to the natural energy. The world was here way before we were, and it's going to be here way after us, regardless of what you believe. Then you get to Tendo Kamai, connect to the divine. And even if you don't want to believe there's something there or not there, you still have to believe that there's an energy that surrounds all of us. Right? And it does, if it's alive, there's an energy, and the connecting to that energy is divine. Oni no kamani, accepting your demons, and then, and then you're not going to defeat them, but push them down to where they're not the ones running your life. Kaze kamai, the position of not letting the wind or other people's positions get to you. You have to let it go. And then kage, or blending in. You're just one of many. Best case scenario, what do you hear? Like on average, what, 80 years? How long has Earth been around? Billions? Even more? 80 years is a speck of nothing. Live your life. Well, if you want to connect to the natural energy, if someone's behind you doing a Saki test, naturally, this intent is abnormal in a natural Tenokamai position. So by connecting to the natural force around you, Ten or Chi, then you would be able to understand when there is something unnatural happen and move when the unnatural is not part of the natural. That's when you move on Saki Jutsu. This also gets into the next section where we talk about the Ten Chi Jin. Right? So that is its point. It's connecting to the energy around you and feeling the disruptance of the energy and then being able to have the correct response to what it is that's going on at the appropriate time.